On today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny, beaming it up, Jenny will show you how she makes amazing faux beams, how to give the dated look of this old house some new life, making some music stands sing again. Also on the show today, port chair Any chance we can find something new to do with this? And how to light up an old lamp. All that and more on today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny. And here we are, Junkin' with Jenny, episode 15. That was a very quick, tight uh, from the intro to me talking. I, you did I, good. I didn't mess it up this week. You're I'm getting better attention. and better every single week. Welcome, everybody, to uh, the program. This is a show where we talk about uh, stuff, about uh, your objects, your places, your things, uh, and how to make them better, basically repurposing uh, items and uh, I- improving them. That's what Junkin' with Jenny is, uh, is all about. So if you have any questions, you want to uh, comment and participate in the program tonight, feel free to leave your comments. Uh, We can read them as we go along the show and uh, interact with us. Tell us what you're thinking about the stuff that we're uh, seeing and uh, doing and all that in uh, the program this evening. Uh, Yeah, so there you go. I'm excited about tonight. Uh, As you notice, there's a new toy on our desk here. This is a a microphone. Yeah. Trying another microphone this week. I'm glad you didn't make me wear the Madonna one because I was like, not excited about that. I had the Madonna one on last week myself, mm-hmm. and I just, I after I was done, I just had this urge to wear uh, a cone bra myself, yeah. and I was like, that'd be a little odd next week. I just, and I, I I'm the urge isn't going to go away, so I said no more to those. Actually, I just wasn't happy with the audio okay. on mine, so um, I've been playing with trying to get the audio better on the show every single week mm-hmm. for the podcast version. If you're listening on the podcast area. Um, that's, uh, that's why I've, I've gone back actually to a physical microphone. Lapels work great for just video, but this is an audio podcast as well. So, yeah. So hopefully this uh, is a bit of an improvement. Um, and we'll just continue to, to mess with that till we get it uh, the way we want. Want to say hi to our, some of our viewers uh, already watching live on Facebook as we do this. Wendy, Heather, <laughs> Stacy, Jay, uh, Jeremy. Uh, thank you all for uh, for joining us. And Jay says, hey, guys, uh, Jenny, looking all fancy. Thank you. Yes, you are. I wish I could have some wine right now. You should. You should have some you wine. Should. In fact, might I suggest a bottle of wine? Might I suggest this week's Creative Juice? Comes to us from Rodney Strong Vineyards, uh, and it's called Upshot. It's a red blend, and uh, I will admit... I was planning and just waiting till we had the cameras going to open this thing up. But about uh, seven minutes before we went live, Jenny's like, can we just open the wine now, please? Can I, we just do it? I like getting a little taste and t- kind of think about it before we actually jump in. Sure. Okay, sure. we'll go with that. Yeah. Um, I think you were just thirsty. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, Upshot, it's a good stuff. It's a blend. Um, it's got all a lot in it. Zin, uh, Merlot, Melbeck, uh, Petit Verdot. Uh, and here's a funny, interesting one about this one for being a red. There's Riesling in it. You it's neat. You don't really see that in a lot of red blends of wine. Uh, 5%, so it's not a ton. But it kind of gives it a little... It's not, it's not like it's tasting like white wine here, and it doesn't make it a... It's not sweet. It's it, not it's sweet. It's still very dry, yeah. but it's... It, it it's not a rosé or anything. anything. It's right. it's a full, you know... See, I'll, I'll pour a little bit here, see? I didn't have any yet, so that's why my glass is empty. Kay says she's drinking wine right now, so that's good. We encourage that while we watch the show. So this is our creative juice. Rodney Strong Vineyards is where it's out of. Rodney Strong, of course, you know, one of like the founding fathers of Sonoma area in uh, California. So they know how to make wine, mm-hmm. to uh, to put it lightly. But uh, Upshot, available now. Good one um, for the holidays and whatnot. I always been, you know, or we, we talk quite a bit about the holidays right now because it is pretty much the holidays. Um, and you're looking for a good one for, uh, for serving really anytime or just yourself. You know, this is a good after work. I want to sit down. I want to have a glass of wine while I'm, you know, playing on my iPhone or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's a, great for that. Yeah, it's a good sipping wine, uh, but it would really go good. It's a full bodied one. So <laughs> it would go good with steaks and that sort of stuff. So Upshot from Rodney Strong. Check it out. Okay, uh, on to this week's uh, episode. We got some neat stuff. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is a project that you've been working on and have been wanting to do for quite some time. We've talked about it, and we finally just said, let's go get this done. Um, yes, we've and been planning this for years. That is faux beams. Yes, and, and, and what makes them faux beams is mm-hmm. they're not structurally supportive. Yeah. They, 
they are not even solid. They mm-hmm. are kind of a wrap around some existing sheetrock work. And you go ahead. You go ahead. You've been doing it. You've been so, doing all the work. I'm just going to drink and you can talk about everything you've been doing upstairs as I've been downstairs all week. So we've been wanting to, we love the look of beams. At least I love the look of beams. And that means at some point they're going to be in the house. So I was really trying to decide what to do, you know, to incorporate that in. And we had some, you know, some open headers and we have a support post that's kind of odd and it's right in our entry and it kind of divides our living and dining and entry and I thought, let's just wrap all of it mm-hmm. and make it all look like it's really old beams. Mm-hmm. And we finally got around to doing that. And it's not uh, using real beams. That's why it's faux yes. beams. Yes. And faux beams doesn't mean we got like fake wood. It means we wrapped, essentially. Mm-hmm. They are they, These are things that look like beams. They're currently in existence as they were. And I'll pull up a picture here uh, on camera. I'm moving my wine so I'm not like, boom! And then we have red wine all over Johnny's <laughs> office because I could totally see that happening. Um, let me just pull up a picture here of a kind of before. This is um, right when we were beginning the project. Um, so you have you just, it's a little inlet underlay um, that, you know, was just, and we just put the, what you see there uh, on this picture is um something we did put up it was just drywall wrapped around this what it is is we forgot to take a before picture when we started getting yeah. it going and then we thought okay well we can still do a before picture with just the very beginning stage so we just mm-hmm. went ahead and did that but as you can see it's all sheetrock and the post kind of has this weird little divot that runs the full length and it's just it was I'm sure awesome in the 90s when the house was built, mm-hmm. but it, it was not at all our style. And I knew it could be something that we could embrace instead of it being an eyesore, eyesore and make it actually sure. a neat architectural feature. So it's not just a bottom thing that we wrap, not just the, the bottom layer. And you'll see it as we go along here. But that's kind of the before. Any any place in the house where you kind of have the, the inlet, if you will, the, the yeah. lower hanging area. Um, this is a place where you could do it. And initially, last week, you played with it in, in our other room. Right. We had kind of that. And this is the end product, essentially. Right. And that's dividing our kitchen from another room. Mm-hmm. And it's simply just three sides and a U made, and it wrapped uh, an existing sheetrocked header. Mm-hmm. Um, and for those who don't really understand what a header is, it's when you have an opening, but you can't go all the way up to the ceiling where it's invisible. It hangs down a little bit like you could have a wall there, but mm-hmm. you don't. And uh, so we wrapped it because, you know, ideally, back in the olden days, and I always refer to the olden days, I don't know how long ago. but The 80s? No, <clears throat> no. But they used to have headers beams would be your header sure and so that's why i thought let's just wrap it make it look like a beam because sure. that kind of fits architecturally anyway yeah i completely agree so that's um that was our start our starter beam just to see how it worked and it turned out well yeah yeah i learned a couple things that i would have done different on that but it's not something that bothers me enough to go back and change mm-hmm. And we can talk about that when we get into how we did the new beams. Sure. So let's let's go into that area of uh, how we did the new beams. I'm going to show some before pictures of, or, or in progress pictures of really how uh, the project went around. Here's a little bit more. This is a little bit better of a before picture um, of, of how it all started. That's looking into the formal dining area. Um, and as you can see on there, you, you can start to see some of the, the, the bottom you know, pieces of wood going up. Uh, and as we progress along the, uh, the project, here's a, uh, inside that spot you're looking at, looking out uh, towards where the picture was taken and the beams are starting to go up and getting a little more uh, in depth. That one's a step backwards. What else do we have for a, uh, before picture? That's, that's not the right room. Uh, but this is essentially what we're looking at before you got to the point of it uh, being finished off. So you wrapped all this stuff. You wrapped the the pole even as well. I did. And you can kind of see from the picture that's on the screen right now, or that was on the screen, you know, we wrapped the bottom and that was our first step. And then we started to go up the sides mm-hmm. of the header and we just used one by sixes. And so we didn't cut them down. We put them up and... Um, that really gave the right, I guess, bulkiness of the beams yeah. to to fit the scale of the project mm-hmm. we were doing. You can do 
wider boards. You could use even a one by eight or one by 12, depending on how big your space is. I didn't want it to overwhelm and, and I'm planning on painting the portion there above the beams and above the header where you can kind of see this mm -hmm. kind of a taupe color. And I wanted to leave some space there to add some color that's going to be painted. But uh, so this is in process. Now I got to say, uh, I think a question I would think a lot of people would have, and I would have too, if I didn't know what you were doing, uh, would be, is this any special type of wood you're using? Is this anything, you know, is this going to be an expensive special type of wood no. or something like that? What exactly are you affixing to the walls here? These are pine boards. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe they are better or choice quality you can go more expensive but i personally mm -hmm. like the knots and the gouges mm -hmm. and the imperfections you just want them to be really straight so when you go to the lumber yard or wherever you're picking out your boards you want to make sure you tell them that this is going to be you know a feature this isn't something that's going to be structurally hidden yeah and they'll help you you know find the best boards for the project but these are pine yeah. just simple one by six pine yeah. um some of the links we had to get extra long because we're talking nine feet posts, mm -hmm. but um, you can easily get that, you know, at your lumber yard or wherever, you know, you shop for lumber, you can ask and they can point you in that direction. And because you want the character in it mm -hmm. and because you're beating the hell, the hell out of it eventually yeah. here, uh, the, the rougher the cut, the better. Just straight is, is, yeah. is going to be key. You, you don't want a bowed board, but you want a board with character when you're doing a project You don't like want this. a bowed board. You don't want one that's straight and then kind of goes off to the yeah, side. Yeah, that won't work well. Um, yeah, but knots things like that sure you know if you find one with wormholes great mm -hmm. um those kinds of things are going to be great for when we get a little mm -hmm. bit further in on the distressing of them i'm going to show an after picture now this is a work in progress because you're actually working on the uh the the dining room as well for another yeah. episode so the dining room is, is is very much in disarray but what we're focusing right now just on the the beams and here's a look at the after and what do you guys think of that in the Facebook comments that are watching? This is what we're we're looking at. This is how it turned out. And here's a little bit closer shot of how Jenny distressed it. And we'll talk about that here in just a second of uh, the distress work that went into uh, making these beams uh, what they are. I'm trying to find the before here and after. I'm putting them side by side up there on the screen. So that's how dramatic of a transformation was made in that that yeah. room with those beams um let's talk a little bit more about um because they're not just up there they're not just bored sitting on the wall you really gave these things character and really made it feel um you know like they were old uh old beams i wanted to make it look as authentic as i could so i thought about the tools that they would have used and i don't want the old school tools that they would have used 150 years ago because i don't know how to use them actually i bought jenny an old woodworking whittling set from an antique store that would be cool that was haunted no, and we started haunted. uh in the, in the middle of the night hearing some old man whittling in the garage and i said well that that's good that means these tools are really really keep going they're I gonna be they're gonna be quality um, but she didn't like the ghost and the apparition of the old man that would float through the house whittling on stuff so that's not true yeah. but um anyway i thought about you know the type of markings that you would find on old beams from the old tools mm -hmm. you know and all the the you know the gouges and the scraping and all that and i thought the best way for me to uh recreate that look was mm -hmm. once they were, were all screwed up into place and secured i went out to our uh survival kit in our storm room you know should our house get hit by a tornado kind of kit? we can do woodworking if we we can we can whittle a and i knew we had a, a little hatchet in there yes. and that's why i was going out there i went and got the hatchet and i hacked away at the edges of the mm -hmm. beams and i hacked away at some of the you know the full the the facade of the beams as well mm -hmm. just to get some hacking marks on there but i really i the whole corner on the corners on all the beams are hacked away and really, really heavily distressed. Mm -hmm. And that was the first step. And then after that, I went back with my, um, you know, my hand palm sander and went over it because I didn't want it to look like I had just hacked it, even though I did. 
I wanted to kind of sand that down and make it look a little rough, but still like it's time worn. Mm -hmm. Cause over time, you know, those are going to get rubbed and, and just wood ages and it starts to kind of soften over time. So once I hacked all the edges and then softened them with the sander and I softened the, the front hacking as well, um, then we started with the stain. Mm -hmm. And do you have any of the stain pictures that I gave you? I do not have those up here, no. Okay, so what you do when you want to achieve an old look, you have to go in layers because beams did not get looking old overnight. Mm -hmm. They did it in layers. So the first thing that I did was I took um, Verathane Dark Walnut stain and I stained all the corners, meaning the whole... Anytime the, the boards meet the, the post, it was up and down, across all the edges where the boards met and where, you know, there was a corner. I stained it with the really, really dark. Here, I'll show you the picture because I should have put it up <laughs> in the graphics, but I didn't have it. I didn't do that. So you can kind so of see it's, it's kind of weird looking with, you know, the white board mm -hmm. in the middle, but all the corners are dark. Um, so that's your first step. It takes a little bit of time. And if it's up high, like ours was, you know, it's a lot of going up and down the ladder. But when you do that, then you can go after it with your, I call it your body stain. Mm -hmm. And it's the stain that you're going to do across the whole entire project. And, uh, for that, I used Minwax Provincial and I went back and, <laughs> put the stain on and kind of worked in where the dark met the light and it blends really, really well, but keeping the dark on the corners, it doesn't um, blend it out. Okay, you're being weird, that's cool. But if you blend it together, <laughs> then it looks more natural. It does. You totally distract me, I lost what I was saying. I'm sorry, I tried not to do that ever. Right, so. After that, then you let it dry for a little while. And then your next step is glazing. And this is the, if you're gonna do anything, if you're not gonna do the dark on the corners or mm -hmm. whatever, this is the thing that's gonna make it look old more than anything. Sure. You do the glazing and what the, I used for it is actually Valspar's Dark Wax for chalk paint. But it's a, it's a thick mm -hmm. um, consistency. And when you put it on there, it kind of gives everything this kind of umber warm, warm kind of tint, but it gets in all those grooves and mm -hmm. nooks and everything. And it looks just like it's been, you know, weathered, weathered, get, gathering kind of the, you know, the aged, yeah. whatever over, you know, 150 years, but you rub that in. Um, I actually used a uh, paintbrush to do that and really work it into all the nooks because so you, you don't want any of those little gouges to sh still show the original white sure. pine. Um, that is quite a, uh, a process, but it is by far the most important step in the whole thing. And you get this. Yeah, and that's what makes it have that old kind of warm glow. But. Yeah. Uh, last step is to cover it in polyurethane and that just kind of protects it because in our house kids are going to hit it, they're going to hang on it, they're going to run around mm -hmm. it. Um, and polyurethane is really good because it kind of will add kind of a yellowy kind of tint to it. Polycrylic goes on clear and stays clear and if you've got it exactly the way you want it that's fine but over time polyurethane will actually kind of get you know its own mm -hmm. kind of orange glow to it so sure. I, I, I like that aspect so I just did a clear coat of it and she got really high in the polyurethane I came back home and she was like hi I've been making beams <laughs> I actually really I planned to do this on you know a rare weekend in here where in December it was going to be 75 degrees so I could mm -hmm. open all the windows and everything because it worked it, if you're staining in place like we chose to do, it's going to fill up your house with all kinds of mm -hmm. smells. And um, so I would recommend doing that when you can open the windows. Yeah. If you have a whole house fan or something like that, turn that sucker on. Uh, but get the windows open, get all that uh, going to, uh, to get the smells out. Because it will smell up your house. So time-wise, as far as time commitment for this project, uh, it took us probably six hours to get all the beams cut and mm -hmm. up exactly right. The two of us working together. And then after that, it was another three hours of just the, doing the staining and glazing and everything. Jenny was playing hatchet. She was 
Just like the the book, she was. I don't remember like the book. Was you about. don't remember the book. I remember. I remember the book, but I don't remember what the book was about. You totally would have freaked out if you'd come home and seen me on this ladder, you know, ten feet up in the air with a hatchet. Yeah, I would have. I would have not been uh, I'm thinking so it was graceful. a great idea. So graceful. But you, I came home and all limbs were still attached. Still have all my fingers and toes. So, so it's that's been successful. Well, you're missing a toe, but we can't see that in camera. So, uh, so. not true. <laughs> <laughs> it did turn out really cool. I'm happy with it. It's it's what I wanted. Oh, we didn't talk about the hardware. Yeah, well, let's talk about. It. You can see it on, okay. on this on this shot here. I'll put a close up here of the hardware a little bit to uh, kind of disguise, I guess, some of the. Uh, uh, what was a better shot? Where's a good hardware shot? There we go. It's a little better. Um, it disguises some of the uh, the edges and the the seams. It does, and you know, beam hardware, real beam hardware is designed to actually be supportive and it's it's expensive per piece it, especially when you don't need it for structural purposes it can be 20 to 30 dollars per piece so what we chose to do is we went and got a bunch of l brackets that were already um pre-coated in a black coating and they came with the black screws and a pack of four, I want to say, was like four dollars, and I, I think I spent thirty dollars total for all the faux hardware, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I stacked them, so they're not just one little, you know, three-quarter inch bracket on each corner. I, yeah. I covered the entire corner of the beams and where the beams met the posts with that. And you know, if you put three or four, even five of them together, it mm -hmm. looks like a substantial piece of hardware. And that was the only thing that we were going for was just sure. that. It, it's not there to hold anything together at all. But I did not want mm -hmm. to spend, you know, $200 just in hardware. Sure. And that's a great way to do it and, and achieve the look. I mean, it is a faux beam. It's faux hardware almost for the faux sure. beam. But when you, you see this piece in your house, you're like, that is dramatic. You walk in. I mean, because it's right in our entry as we walk in. And I remember that when I walked in uh, in the morning after she had, had done this, because I had helped put the wood up right. and secure. That was that was my contribution to this project. And then she did all the standing and all the distressing mm -hmm. and everything. And I walked in. I left the morning and it was just, you know, the pine boards up. Came back a couple hours later. And I was like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Well, this is awesome. So... I'm pretty proud of it. it. It turned out really, really well. So that's that. If you have any questions about any of this, you can always reach out to us on our website at junkinwithjunny.com. If you have a space, a place, an object, an item you want advice on what to do with, reach out to us. We would love to uh, include it on a uh, future episode of the program and uh, give you some uh, ideas and insight. Okay, we got a lot of stuff on the show today that we're going to be talking about. You want to go to an item or a space? We should have like a wheel that we spin back here. Item, or, item space. or space. Item or space. Big money. I don't care. You pick. Um, let's go to, I'm just going to go right down the row of uh, graphics that I have here on my little dashboard. Okay. So I don't put it in the wrong order. Let's uh, let's just go to a space. Let's go to a living room space that someone wants to get some feedback on. They feel it's a bit crowded, a little bit cramped, uh, but this is their space. This is their furniture. Don't have a whole lot of money to do a whole lot of other things. Uh, you know, th th there's a little bit of disposable here to add some, uh, you know, flair, if you will, or, sure. or some some features. They're open to painting. They're open to ideas. Uh, it's just, you know, what can you do with what's here? Um, and you know, this is, I think, a common problem. I think a lot of folks, you know, you, you have a certain set of, you know, furniture. Either you got it when you, uh, you know, you're younger and you, you move out uh, or, uh, oops, let's put ourselves back on camera, uh, or what have you you have a certain set of stuff and then you have a certain space and the certain set of stuff doesn't always match with mm -hmm. the certain space that you have but you're trying to make it all work and there's a certain level of guilt i think when you have stuff right of all must be used and i think that's something that a lot of folks need to kind of get over if you will i mean it, it's a tough thing for me too but it's it's like a hurdle you got to kind of jump over going okay this is my space this is my stuff 
maybe I don't need all my stuff in this space. Exactly. It's kind of like you no longer have to have a happy plate yeah. at dinner either. You know, that's what, not always best for you. <laughs> what we're looking at on, on the screen here for our podcast listeners are uh, a full couch and a love seat. Uh, looks like an end table, a bit of a coffee table, a large big screen, kind of the fatter big screen from the uh, early part of the 2000s. Uh, and uh, some other decor, all kind of lodged into a rectangular, what would you say the dimensions of this room are? You know, it's probably um, 8 by 12. It's a lot of stuff in a room. It is, and it, you know, it's a kind of elongated yeah. living room. I'm guessing that it's half of a duplex, yeah. just the way the, the roof kind of peaks in the front sure. door placement. And so, you know, when you have a space like that and it's long and narrow, it, there is really not an optimal, optimal positioning of your couch and your TV. Because obviously you want your couch in front of your TV, but you have to have a walking space in there. So in this, you know, setup, I don't envision there ever being a spot where you're not going to walk in front of the TV. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I will say is, you know, maybe put the couch on the wall where the TV is, which is the the longer wall in the room, mm-hmm. and maybe look at getting the love seat somewhere else. Give it a, a new home. Give it a new home. A new Give life. it a different room. A whole put it new world in the basement or storage, just because it, it's too much all in this yeah. one room. Um, then, you know, you can't really change the footprint, obviously, but to make it feel bigger, you don't want things that are going to define the space as far as making it smaller. Mm -hmm. So I would take the rug up. The rug, rugs are good for defining spaces in large areas, but in a small area, it just makes a small space feel smaller. So I would get rid of the rug and move the love seat out of the picture and then take down the red curtains Red curtains are not going to do anything but add darkness to a room. So you're really, you're not going to want that for mm-hmm. making it feel bigger. I'd replace it with some kind of white curtain or light colored pattern curtain. And, you know, try it that way. Uh, the coffee table I still see being useful in front of the sofa. But, you know, you can position the TV in a different spot once it's flipped from where the sofa is existing. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It does make sense. You can actually move it down a little bit, maybe position it more in a corner and have more of a little bit of a, you know, open area because, you know, you need floor room for Mm -hmm. just the space and kids and whatever. Mm -hmm. I would say, I mean, I I agree with pretty much everything you said. Uh, Flipping things would be a great idea in a room like this. If you don't want to flip it, it could still work, I think. I just think you got to dump that love seat because there's just not room for it. And Mm -hmm. you just have to kind of accept that this is a space you have right now. You know, if you don't want to throw it away, which you don't necessarily need to, if it's in good condition, you know, see if there's somebody's basement that you can put it in, a friend, a family member or whatnot, or if you have a storage space, put put it there. Um, Worst case, you know, just, you know, if you're planning on being in this space for a while, there's so, so many things you end up looking back and going, why did I hold on to that thing for so long? Right. That, I, I've done that so many times. Um, you know, if you can get rid of it, then, then you may just need to do that. Um, the the thing is, I think there's just so many busy things going on here. The furniture is busy looking, meaning the design is just all over the place. You know, it's it's you know it's ornate, but there's a lot going on with it. If you're wanting a more simplistic and I think a bigger feel to this room, I would consider doing some sort of a covering for the couch itself um, and the pillows on it, or replacing some of the pillows. Going more with a solid color of some sort. Um, if getting a new couch is not an option, I think that might be a, a good choice to do. Like I said, get rid of that other couch. You got a little bit more of an open space there, maybe over by the window. Uh, I would change those curtains up. Um, they are kind of darkening and, and they just they don't really work. I would add some light into that room. Can you believe I'm saying that? I'm like the king of darkness. You are the king of darkness. You're basically a human uh, mushroom. I am. Um, but uh, I would I would get rid of that. I would go with something lighter and something that necessarily maybe not even cover the entire window. Um, and then maybe just a small little accent table over there with you know maybe some greenery on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still something you can walk over to and oh I can look out my window and there's a little space here. I'm not just you know cramped in there. Um, 
I agree. Probably get rid of that uh, that rug, uh, the television set. If it's still working, um, I, okay. But you know, it may be time to consider um, switching that thing out because I'm, I'm almost honestly thinking what you're paying in energy costs for that thing to run in the course of a year, you could probably get a new uh, television set for like two or three hundred dollars you could probably sell yeah. the love seat and yeah. put that towards a new tv you and really could you could probably get how about a hundred bucks out of the love seat and you aren't going to need the piece of furniture yeah. that the tv is sitting on then and that tv's space is going to save you a good couple of feet which will open up the room even more mount that thing on the wall um and you'll be so much happier i, re I remember having a tv very similar to that um a long time ago and I remember just, oh, it's great, it's big, but they make such economically priced cheap televisions right. now, like the Roku TVs and stuff, like I think like the brands like TCL or something. Mm -hmm. Even Best Buy has a generic on it um, of their TVs. I forget what the brand is, but it's a, it's a generic, but it's made by LG. So it's like, oh, it's a good quality, but it's technically generic. Um, but look into that because you can get really good TVs now that are big. You can mount on a wall. You'll be so much happier with And I can guarantee your picture will be better based on probably what the age of that is. Um, look at that. That's going to save you some space as well. Um, and it'll just kind of, you know, pull the, the room up to a more modern feel. I, you know, probably change up some of that stuff on the wall. It's kind of busy looking as well. Go with something a little more, uh, you know, I guess solid in feel, less ornate. Yeah. I don't know what I would do exactly, but maybe some canvas art or something. I don't know. What would you do? <laughs> Jay says, put some foil on the windows. Do you have any stories about foil on windows? Uh, I think that'd be a great idea. Uh, <laughs> uh, foil on windows is a lovely idea. I used to do it uh, to keep the aliens away. Um, no. And the, uh, the, the, their, their vibes into my brain. Now, um, my dad likes to pretend that that's what I was doing. But um, no, I, I used to work late at night um, in radio. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a, a corner apartment unit and uh, I had windows that were like literally on all sides of my bedroom. And it got bright and I didn't have... Uh, shades that blocked light very well i didn't have the money to buy shades that, that blocked light very well so i literally you know covered the, the <laughs> windows in foil to uh to, to get get the light out um and then my dad's like what are you covering your windows in foil for I'm like well because i work late at night and i need it to be dark so i can sleep during the day and he still teaches me about it to this day saying it yeah. was about the aliens so it was not about the aliens dad i swear Stacey, Wait, I'm getting a message. I'm getting... <laughs> Stacy's asking, "What does that mean?" Because she had neighbors that did that. It's probably yeah. just to keep. It's the, light uh... blocking. It's cheap light block. Yeah, you're not going to get any light penetration no. through foil, yeah. so it's a cheap blackout curtain. But it also looks really bad. It's horrible. Yeah, but so I mean, don't do that. We're I, not we're... advocating. That no, at all. where I was living, it was it was not a great apartment unit. I was like 22, and it was just yeah. no one cared. It kind of fit in the neighborhood, but <laughs> but it worked. Um, for light blocking, but yeah, so there's there's you know some insight on on how to make that room a bit better. There's just too much going on. Just too much. Too yeah. much. Uh, all right. If you have a uh, space, a place you want some advice on, some ideas, uh, just uh, send it to us on our website at junkinwithjenny.com. If you're watching us on Facebook Live right now, please do chime in. A lot of you are chiming in. Thank you for that. Uh, we love uh, hearing your uh, your feedback on uh, what's going on. Pat says around here where I am, if there's foil on a window, it means people are growing marijuana. <laughs> it could mean that I, too. I never even thought of that. I, I suppose yeah. I probably was like on someone's radar of like, I wonder what's going on up well, there. Well, as much as it keeps natural light out, sure. it keeps, you know, it reflects light inside. So. That's true. That's true. I only know that from watching Trailer Park Boys. I don't know that from experience. A great television show, by yeah. the way, for all of the family to enjoy. Uh, let's go to another. Let's go to an object. Okay. Now let's go to right down my list. Let's go to these. These are beautiful. Hang on. Here's all of us on screen. No. <laughs> there we go. Skis. And these are cool because they're the old wooden water skis and they look vintage. And mm -hmm. I really like that about them. Mm -hmm. So what do you have as far as an idea? I have an idea, but let's let you go first. Have you ever water skied? No, I've never water skied or snow skied. I've never water skied. No. I have I have snow skied. I enjoy uh -huh. snow skiing. I haven't done it for like 12 years, so I'm sure I'd be horrible at it today. But... Um, 
I, th the idea I have on this, and I know I, I go to this a lot, but I like these things because they're they're kind of fun and it's a light. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's like essentially you use the snow ski. I'd probably paint it. I'd probably do it dark or Why? something. Why? It's beautiful. Well, it's just depending on what the room is. Uh, you could keep it the same way it is. It just all depends. Okay. But I'd be drilling some holes in it. You're never going to use the skis again. Never going to float again. No. And uh, I would, you know, I would do some again. hanging pendant uh, lights from it that are, um, what, what are you singing? Careless Whisper, but never gonna float. Never again. gonna float again. I brought Someone that on. Someone turned my, my skis into a pendant. There you go. There you go. So that's what I would do. I would turn into like uh, several lights hanging from the pendant. Um, probably do them literally side by side, hanging from a ceiling, maybe over like a. Uh, uh, an island in a kitchen or a bar or something. Um, it was just kind of fun. Just you know, especially if like skiing's your thing or water skiing's your thing, it'd be kind of a fun piece for depending on how, how I guess fun your house is. I think what I would do with them is actually use some brackets and make them wall shelves because they're not very deep and you mm -hmm. can use them for you know, books or whatever. But I would do them upside down so that. You know the part where you put your foot. I don't know yeah. what that's ca called, but all it's that. It's called the part where you put your foot. All of that is on the bottom side, so you just have mm -hmm. you know the flat ski top or ski bottom as the top shelf. Mm -hmm. I like that. I, I think that'd be uh, that'd be a fun thing to do. I'm trying to think of another version of "Never Gonna Dance Again." Guilty feet have gotten over them. <laughs> Careless whisper, but. Yeah. I no, think. that's all I've got, and I wouldn't paint them or anything. I think they're pretty. I yeah. like the retro look. Would you ever water ski? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Me and water don't mix very well. What if we watch like a nice old school Faces of Death video right no. before it? And then remember that? Remember like you could like, there was like a 90s, late 90s thing where like late like, infomercials like, buy Faces of Death. And it was. I a, don't want to see it that. It was a VHS tape. that. Is just... that where you saw the gore of bad accidents and stuff? No, that was there was a website for that too in the nineties where like the internet was new and everybody's like, ooh, what sort of insane website can we make? And it was like rotten or okay. something. I don't remember. Uh, but I remember that was like it was a video series. I remember like seeing it even like at Family Video, mm -hmm. which is the funniest thing. The concept of the Family Video, they like had the most extreme movies of every video store. But I don't think oh, it's well, good water skiing edition. Faces I... of Death water skiing. I will say this. I probably have a better chance of you getting... You probably have a better chance getting me to snow ski yeah. than water ski. What if we talked about Sonny Bono a lot right before we went skiing and did a... Let's look at <laughs> another picture. <laughs> okay. Uh, next object uh, we have here to uh, take a look at today. This is an old lamp. I think my mom actually has one very similar to this where the light actually turns on with like, what looks like a key. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It It is a reproduction of a Victorian lamp. Yeah. And the yep. reason I say that it's a reproduction is because it has the 1970s orange and brown flowers on you it. You mean in the Victorian age they didn't have 1970s orange and brown flowers? They, oh my. They had flowers but not in this color palette. So I don't know if there's a way to get the flowers off of it. Missing out. That would be my first attempt, would be to try and somehow get the flowers off of the lamp mm -hmm. and then just keep the lamp as is. Because I'm afraid if you try and paint over it, you're going to block all light from coming through. Yeah, I mean, that's... <sighs> My initial thought was to do some sort of like a like a rust-oleum paint that could handle heat right. on it, but you would end up blocking a lot of light out of it. Um, I, you know, it, it may be one of those pieces where if you're going to do anything with it to to give it new life, because I don't know that you can get that off. I, right. I really don't know without damaging the globe extensively or whatnot. Well, and you know, honestly. If you started scraping away and the white paint came off mm -hmm. with the flowers, I would keep going. Sure. And just get it to bare glass. But I don't know that that's how it's constructed. I don't know that it's a glazing yeah. on top. Yeah. It may be made in. Two... It would be like almost porcelain. Yeah. Or like almost a see-through porcelain. So you're going to have to take a look at that. If, if you if you don't care about accidentally ruining it, um, try the scraping method with like mm -hmm. a you know, like kind of a, a, a rough sponge. 
almost not not like a, a not steel wool not steel wool but uh like the 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 green and yellow brillo brillo or scotch bright yeah scotch bright just see what you get and if it comes off and you suddenly see see through you got something to work with yeah i would take it off and try soaking yeah. the globes individually mm-hmm. for a while yeah. and i'm not sure if soaking just in water might help kind of mm-hmm. loosen that or if you're going to need to soak it with like borax or something i'm not real sure but mm. I, that would be my first attempt. Is yeah, go ahead. There's not a lot to do yeah. with that. I'm not a big fan of reproduction of old stuff. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how to even get those flowers out there. It's likely not worth very much, but if you really are wanting to save it, it could be a family piece or something where it's like I just want to this is not fitting my house, but I want to reuse it. It was in my mm-hmm. my you know, I could see it where it's like it was in my mom's living room forever sure. and I just wanted to do something with it. Um Tread lightly, but attempt something like that to try and get it off. And they, what I would go with if you're going to repurpose the the globe, um, if you can get that off, is essentially use like a fogged glass type paint, mm-hmm. like you would like we've used before on, to to fog glass, right? Um, and and go with it from there. I, I think if if you can get that far, um, there's some neat things you could do if you wanted to do any sort of inscribing or sketching on it of like a a saying or a word or something that could be kind of a neat piece if you can get that far Mm -hmm. just without seeing the object without having it right here you know physically to look at it's hard to say what can or can't be done so you know kind of tread lightly on it and some objects like this that would work on others it may not um you know what you guys think on facebook feel free to uh to to post your comments as well yeah uh is it araya i'm not sure how you say that it's really pretty though or Uh deconstructed into vases and that's a good idea too. You would have to somehow, you know, mm-hmm. seal the bottom and leave the top open. Sure. But you could then paint it, and you know, it would be all one piece. Mm-hmm. Oh, nail polish remover. That's pretty good at getting anything yeah. off of anything. I would try that. Couldn't you get another lamp covering? Things like this, the coverings are very specifically fit. They are, and I'm not sure that you could actually put another lamp harp yeah. onto this. I don't know that it would actually attach mm-hmm. because it's designed for this glass globe to sit on top. Otherwise, yeah, I would just get a regular lampshade and sure. then paint the base of it and yeah. call it good. I just don't know that you could get it um, to actually function. And, you know, maybe you could try one of the lampshades where the bulb actually screws in and then it mm-hmm. kind of goes up you know, from the bulb and it supports mm-hmm. itself that way, that may work. And if that does work, then you could just, you know, spray paint it and call it good. But yeah. then you have this globe that you're like, well, that part's wasted because yeah. there's really not anything to do with it. If you're not attached to the globe, you could take the globe off the top, spray paint the bottom, do an Edison bulb type thing at the top. And it could look somewhat interesting. It could be. Um, yeah. it, it's just It's just a matter of, what type of piece is this to you? Is the globe kind of right. the piece you remember and that's why you're wanting to to give it some new life. So thank you for that. Hope that helped a little bit. And thank you guys for weighing in on Facebook Live here as we do this. Please continue to do that. Love to see your comments uh, and your uh, ideas on the objects as we go through this. This next one, um, one of my favorites. I, I saw this was like, oh, this is awesome. This will be great fun. Take a look at this. This is an old school potty chair. Yeah. It yeah. is. And I don't know from looking at the size of it if this is like <laughs> a child's potty chair. I think it's like adult size. Okay. It's just like something that, quite honestly, there is a, I'm not even kidding, there is a church uh, not too far from us down the road. It's, um, what is it called? The um, Sycamore Church Road? Sycamore Log Church. Sycamore Log mm-hmm. Church in Branson here. And it's literally a log cabin church. Yeah. And out, they don't have indoor plumbing. They out, have a, uh, I wanted to say porta pot, but no. it's not. It, it's it's, it's like this. It's an outhouse with this. Yes, and and it's except there's the hole isn't going into a, a pot in the the chair. It just goes into the the ground. Um, but it's out back behind. So it's it's very similar to this. But these are, I mean. I would imagine fairly rare. I can't imagine a lot of people who saved these things. <laughs> but what do you do with something like this? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. I have an idea. And now Jenny gives us advice on what to do. Okay, so this this let's describe this porta pot thing first. Yeah. Okay, it basically is a wooden box with a 
a seat that is just a square of wood with a hole and then the pots underneath for you to do your business and then it looks like it has a lid that lifts up that's on hinges mm -hmm. and it has legs to it on the box so i honestly kind of thought maybe that i would take it and sand it i would get rid of the pot i would add a bottom to it where the pot i'm sure Mm -hmm. is removed and and you have you know just open i'm sure there's not an actual bottom to this box mm -hmm. so i would get rid of the top piece that has the hole where you sit and shit and <laughs> i would actually take the lid off of it and i know i'm saying a lot my goal for this would actually be a jewelry box do you see it I kind of get where you're coming from. Okay, so you cut the legs off, you sand the wood, and get it to where it doesn't have any remnants of usage. <laughs> Stacy says, no, just no. I know, right? <laughs> a this jewelry is the box. show. we got to figure it out. So. How to make the shitter into a jewelry box. <laughs> it's a wooden box. Essentially, if you get rid of the ew factor, yeah. it can be a box. But you get rid of the, the part where you sit on it, mm -hmm. and then you reattach the lid to where it lifts up. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, Basically, you're just turning it back into just a wooden box with no feet. You can paint it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, sand off all the... You know, where you can tell where when they put the lid down on mm -hmm. looking at the picture, there's just like a circle there where it's just gross. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of a water fountain where you could get like kind of water just to shoot up through it like a bidet and then you just reach over and... Heather, I totally get you. You say, I think of all the germs that the wood is holding and that's why I would sand it and then somehow refinish it. A water fountain. But you could use it as some kind of storage box. I was just thinking of what could you use a big wooden box like that for? I like the idea of the goldfish that uh, Shonda said. I was actually kind of thinking that myself. It's it's too small for a koi pond. <laughs> maybe just like a goldfish maybe like in the a, Just one goldfish in there. And I, I think I would, you know, kind of sand the wood down, you know, make it. Uh, literally, it, it would be like a goldfish bowl. Yeah. And I would sand the wood down, refinish it up, you know, probably chalk paint of some sort. And then it just, you know, it would be like instead of having a goldfish bowl on a ledge, the goldfish is like, it would be a really odd little accent piece in a house. Um, it'd probably be more of an accent piece if you're, you know, in your 20s and have an apartment and you like want something that people are going to go, what is, this? oh my God. And it's ah. it's a fun little, little piece. Stacy says, nice try, Jenny. More wine, please. And I, I'm just trying mm -hmm. to think outside the box, no pun intended. Otherwise, it's it's just yeah. gross, and yeah. I was really like, when you sent me that one, I was like, yeah, really. I would put like a little, uh, 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 you know, like the 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 twist uh, candy uh, things where you get like the, to where the, goldfish the candy food. drops into the bowl. No, no, no. It, you you have the goldfish that lives in the the shitter here, and. <laughs> As cousin Eddie would say, and then right next to it is is the, the Merry Christmas is the, hole. is the old school <laughs> antique um, uh, candy machine, but you just fill it with goldfish food, and then people as they come over like, oh, feed the goldfish in the toilet, and they just they put a quarter in and they get their their goldfish food, and they just kind of feed the goldfish in the. So I think <laughs> I have no clue what the hell to do with this, but that would be my that would be what I would do. <laughs> I think that's my least favorite object we've had to figure out. I think that's one of the most creative things we've come up with. And it's not like this is like somebody really cared for it. This is roached out. Yeah. This is terrible. I wonder where, when you find that thing, you know, I don't know why you'd have an emotional attachment to it, but where if you found it on, I don't know, a garage sale or something, why you, you would pick it up unless you go, I can't wait to make that, that toilet goldfish bowl. Um, I, I don't really know. Um, so uh, I, I like that one. Thank you guys for your comments and yeah. ideas as we uh, we discuss what to do with a uh, what was a former toilet. Uh, okay, let's do this and we'll do a space after that. These are old music stands. I like these. These kind of remind me of the old, you know, orchestra type yeah. things you would see like in an old school hotel, like a grand hotel or something. They'd hold their music on. It's far more uh, than just your 
black rectangle uh, music uh, holder. This is, uh, you know, in the shape of musical notes, very ornate. What would you do with something like this today? I would take it off the stand and I would somehow add a almost kickstand to the back, if you will, so it stands up. Mm -hmm. And it is now on my kitchen counter and it holds my iPad for recipes or a cookbook. I like that. You like that? I like that a lot. It was kind of the direction I was going to go. It could also be used, I would think you could uh, affix, um, there's, a, there's a very narrow shelf on there, which is just for originally holding pieces of music, but you could probably find a way to affix, uh, even just directly to the wall on the sides of it, not even necessarily right to this. I would maybe take the, uh, the current stand off uh, of the ornate piece, affix them to the wall, get it basically what would be like a floating shelf. Sure. Um, and then uh, affix that to the wall the way you'd affix a floating shelf right where the music stand is, save a little more room, and you have a neat little back piece to a shelf, mm -hmm. uh, or a very neat ornate floating shelf, probably like on a more narrow wall where these would really, you know, they'd fill it up and they'd be really be a show piece. I don't think they would work on a very big fat wall. It would be too, too small. It needs to be yeah. a, a small wall yeah. where you can kind of, you know, maybe like in a bathroom or something yeah. above a real functioning toilet not a box with it would a be great above the one with the goldfish no in it. but you could you know totally use it there but i just thought it would be a cute cookbook stand i like them yeah yeah Those they're pretty no okay let's go to a uh, a place this is uh, somebody who's got an older home they just purchased uh it's kind of like a 1950s 60s ash Ask a ranch style home. It's kind of got the yellowish, brownish bricks going on. Uh, a very uh, uh, somewhat ornate, looks like uh, cast iron uh, porch. What would you? How would you describe that porch? It's more than railing. It's like a, a post, but it kind of also has like cast iron. Cast iron ivy. Ivy. Yeah. Uh huh. So I. I think it's a cute house. It's got yeah. great bones. Mm -hmm. So what I would do, obviously, it looks like at some point the garage was either added mm -hmm. or it was enclosed from being a carport and then and connected to the house. And it's got white siding on it. So the base, the, the bulk of the house is the yellow brick and then you've got the white siding. I would just paint all of it because yellow brick is cute and it's nice and light, but it obviously looks like these are two pieces stuck together mm -hmm. and I, I think it would look better if it was one cohesive piece yeah so i would actually paint it maybe a cream color kind of a happy medium between the two colors that are going on and i would just go ahead and paint the brick the siding the garage door everything mm -hmm. Um, there's a big window on the front and one, it's kind of an L shaped house. And one of the sides where the garage is also has a big window. Both of those, I would look at either adding some kind of shutter or window box, something just to kind of dress up those windows, maybe even both. Uh, then it has some of those, uh, high windows, like you see in older ranch homes where, you know, it maybe was above a bed or something like that. Mm -hmm. I would just leave those alone. Uh, there's not really anything you can do to balance the size of those out to compare to the big windows. Mm -hmm. And the iron railing, I'm sorry, I would get rid of it. And I would do some other type of support posts there. You know, wood or, you know, just not a column by any means, but maybe a post, just a regular square post. The railing, uh, not the railing, but the cast iron ivy just really dates it. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I really like um, what we've been talking about here with, uh, and we've been showing on our show what we did with our brick. Mm -hmm. Our brick was not this color, but it was dated. Um, and, and painting brick, you can do so many things with. So whatever you do with the brick, you know, you kind of can carry over to the siding, which still, you're exactly right. It looks like two different pieces were kind of pushed together. Um, I would do some of those shutters on this thing mm -hmm. that you've uh, done. Uh, we've talked about that on previous shows. Uh, so I'd shutter up the windows a bit. The plants look, I, I think I'd probably change those up. They look a little bit out of control. It looks like somebody kind of almost tried to create some sort of pottery around them at some point. I think they are actually tires. Like they grew are those the, tires? They grew the plants through the tires. Okay. They got to go. They I, do have to go. I would rip those out and I'd go with some sort of newer, you know, greenery, maybe like a little, uh, 
what would you do with it? Boxwoods like a, or yeah. something that's going to, over time, as it gets some size, sure. it can be managed easier. Yeah. These look like they are too large. And, and out I, of control. I can't even tell what the plants are, but they're just yeah. too large for the size of the house. Yeah. And, and I agree about that, the uh, the metal... Uh, uh, what will we support the support cast iron, cast iron stuff. yeah stuff that's yeah. there i'd rip that out uh if if you i would say if you don't if it's not necessarily needed at for support which i don't even know if it is i think it's more ornate than anything else i might just knock that whole thing out and just open that porch up a little bit more so it's just a straight sea out mm -hmm. put some rocking chairs on there um and not have something blocking the view if there is something support wise i would go with something fairly narrow um, and not so obvious, uh, so you can enjoy that little bit of porch that is there, because it's not much of a porch. Um, but really just, yeah, paint up that brick um, and just get everything more cohesive. Change out the landscaping a bit, and you have a whole new house very, very quickly. Sarah has a great idea. She says, put decorative trellis below those little windows, fill mm -hmm. in the blank space. That is a great way to kind of balance out mm -hmm. the large window with the smaller windows. Yeah. And you could do that right there by the porch. You could put something really neat that you're going to walk by every day. I think that's a really cool idea. Eric says, put better lively bushes out front. I have, exactly. Yeah. I completely agree. There's a lot of ways that this could be fixed up really quickly. Um, and depending on how much uh, you know work you want to put into it yourself, uh, it could be done fairly economically with, yeah. with some paint and, and really just some effort because um, a lot of this does not necessarily require a contractor. Um, and you can figure out very quickly if that uh, the, the faux metal thing is, is structural or not. Right. You know, when in doubt, ask somebody, yeah. you know, find out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you need to do another post, you can always do that and make it look neat. Otherwise... Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's pretty gaudy, but all the things that we mentioned in this are mm -hmm. things that you and I would attempt, and I would assume yeah. that most DIYers mm -hmm. would feel comfortable attempting sure. with enough YouTube and enough, you know, Googling on how to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think you could do that for, you know, a matter of hundreds of dollars, not yeah. thousands. Exactly. You get a contractor involved in that, it's going to be thousands. You do it yourself, you can probably do a lot of what we just talked about for under $500. You know, we're all about getting a contractor when you need a contractor, yeah. but there's so many things you can attempt to do before you take that step. Sure. Uh, Eric says, knock the L-shaped concrete. I just want to pull that picture back up. Yeah, I would too. I mean, what's the point of that? I mean, what is that really... Uh, it's like creating like a small little inlet there. The bricks there? Yeah, the bricks. What is... What is? Why is that there? Is that is that retaining for a water thing? I mean, it could be a spill, but you could go... If there's a... If that's an issue, we just go around it. I don't see the point of it. It's just decorative to kind of make a courtyard there in front of the porch. The hesitation I have with that is not only are you going to have to find... If you're not a brick mason yourself, find a brick mason to properly end, end it. where that is yeah. but you also have you can see there are a concrete support underneath that runs yeah. the whole foundation of the house all the way to the end of that little brick wall that's why i would just work with it rather than get rid of it because you're going to have a lot of expense in trying to get rid of that sure. more so than just working with it i see what you're saying ideally if i could rip it out i agree but you're right you're talking about foundation there beyond just that brick and, and and it's not necessarily foundation under this part of the wall but it attaches to the house foundation yeah. that's where i get nervous i would not want to do that but ideally i completely agree eric i would get rid of it if i could mm -hmm. um but i think that's outside of a diy yeah shawty says maybe it was a patio before an add-on could have been possibly yeah yeah i could i could see that um, it, it's an odd thing. I agree. But I mean, there, there may be ways to work with it, though, too. I mean, you could still theoretically, if you wanted to do a patio there, you could. It's kind of an odd place to put one, but you could probably, if you wanted that, and there's not much of a backyard, which I don't know what's there, there's some possibilities there. Well, the porch is very small. Maybe that's yeah. where you need to focus, like, you know, putting your rocking chairs or whatever sure. if you're going to sit outside, out. if you're in that kind of neighborhood. Yeah. Expand it out. All right. There you go. There's some ideas on what to do.
with that space. Thank you guys for weighing in on Facebook Live with us. We love having you guys do this. If you're listening to our podcast right now, wondering when we do this on Facebook Live, it's uh, every Thursday, right around 8 p.m. Central Time, and we do it over on our uh, Real Ghost Stories online Facebook page. That's where we've been doing our show for a long period of time. That's where a lot of our audience is, so we just kind of launched the Facebook Lives on there because that's where we're likely to find more people right now. Um, right. So please uh, do join us uh, there live if you're listening to the podcast 8 p.m. on Thursdays, uh, 8 p.m. Central on Thursdays uh, on our Real Ghost Stories online uh, Facebook page. So be sure to look that up and you can I'm sure find it through our, our Junkin' with Jenny Facebook page as well. I always put notices out of where to go. So yeah. where, wherever you follow, follow that on Thursdays, you'll find a path to find <laughs> us. Um, Jay, one more comment here says, or you could attach some mesh wood with screen paint uh, with screen, paint it to match, and make a small porch, or you could still avoid mosquitoes. Yeah, there's a there's a sure. way of doing that as well. In the front, I don't know how aesthetically pleasing that would be, but uh, I, I I you 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 certainly could do that. I'd box it in. Oh, and the the. <laughs> the shitter box, he would turn into a birdhouse. Turn the shitter box into a birdhouse. I like that. It's already got a hole. We're always talking so. about putting animals in this little containment <laughs> unit that was once a, a toilet. Right. So, right. anyway. Uh, it's been a fun episode, everybody. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. Greatly appreciate uh, you guys uh, taking the time to tune in tonight and participate in this episode of Junkin' with Jenny. Be sure to check out this week's uh, Creative Juice Rodney Strong Upshot. I'll move it over here so you can see it's available at a uh, wine store, liquor store near you. Retails for roughly around, depending on where you're in the country, about 20 to 30 bucks a bottle, uh, depending where you are. So check it out. Good stuff. Thank you guys for uh, supporting the show. All right, until next time. We'll see you next Thursday. I'm Tony. That's Jenny. Thanks for watching another episode or listening to another episode of Junkin' with Jenny. <laughs>